Okay, so hi everybody, this is Valerie Van Boeven. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we are going to talk about marketing your home care business in the month of October using O2O methods. O2O means offline to online marketing methods. My name is Valerie Van Boeven. I'm a registered nurse and the co-owner of LPC Expert Publications. My partner is George Novison and he is also on the line. Hi George, if you're if you're muted, unmute your line, say hi to everybody. Hi Valerie, hi everyone. So George and I um, are going to, I'm going to go over all the different things you can do in the month of October and one of the things that I want you to see, and we hadn't done this before, there's a little section in your dashboard that you should be able to see, and it says handouts, and there's one handout, um, and you should be able to click on that and open it up. It's a PDF document. Um, you'll want to refer to that later, but it's yours to keep, so you're going to want to click on it and download that document and keep it, because a lot of the things, actually it's right out of this PowerPoint presentation, but it will help you for the month of October. So go ahead and um, download that when you get a chance. And so here's what I want uh, you to know, and we start our webinars this way. First of all, this is being recorded, and I will send out the replay. But in order to increase your viewing pleasure, I want you to turn everything off. Silence your phone, close your door, give yourself some time to learn some new strategies. I want you to focus on what I'm about to say, and of course stick around until the end because we are going to uh, do question and answer at the end and a lot of times there are some brilliant questions um, and they really add to the program so stick around to the end and we'll do questions and answers and I also have a super cool bonus that I'll give away at the end so if you're watching this live that's awesome you can interact with me um, the way we do questions is that you type them into the little questions panel that you have um, we don't open up the phone lines. There's just too much noise and, and confusion. We have 350 people registered for this webinar, and um, we have tons of people that are going to be on the line today. So having said that, we're going to move right along here. So my goal for you and my goal for you with any webinar that we do is that you'll walk away from this webinar with motivation and new ideas that will help you grow your home care business. So it doesn't matter whether you ever do business with us. I just want to make sure that every time we hold a webinar that you are able to learn something and walk away and know that you can put some of those tips, hints, and, and um, ideas that we present, you can put those to use right away. So O2O marketing, um, I just want to re repeat what that means. For those of you who aren't sure, offline to online marketing means taking all the stuff that you do offline, meaning those events that you attend, the things that you sponsor, the hands that you're shaking at the chamber meeting, all that stuff that you're, you're beating the pavement, looking people in the eye, you want more referrals from other professionals, all of that is your offline marketing. That is your in-person, and you want those direct referrals. That's your in-person marketing. What we want to teach you to do, and what we've been talking about for a long, long time now, is that although that offline marketing is super important, if you don't convert it to online marketing as well and use those two things together, you're missing potentially 30, 40, 50 percent of your leads. So what we do is we teach you how to take all that offline stuff that you do every single day or that you have a marketing person out there doing every day and you convert it into something you can use online to increase your visibility, to get you to the first page of Google, to make sure your community knows that you're reaching out and that you're actually participating and supporting them um, in elder care issues and things like that. So offline marketing, to online marketing. Those two things in 2015 and beyond should be combined together. So I could go on and on about that all day. So we're going to talk about this in terms of phases and then I'm going to give you some specifics that you can use in the month of October. So the first phase of offline to online marketing is the planning phase. You have to sit down and get organized. A lot of people like to just go with it 
fly off the handle or, if, you know, by the seat of their pants or whatever and just go out there. But if you can just take a few minutes to plan, this doesn't have to take very long. And once you get good at it, it's super easy. So you have a planning phase, you have a pre-marketing phase, which is the stuff that you're going to do before you walk out the door. You have a live marketing phase, which is the stuff you're doing while you're in the midst of marketing in person. And you have the post-marketing phase. So that's the stuff that you're doing after each event or after each thing that you decide you're going to do. And then, of course, you have the automated follow-up phase. So these are the five phases. We've gone over these and talked about these a lot. If you can manage these five phases of your marketing, your offline and your online world will come together, and that will increase your visibility, your authority, your trust in your local community. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Planning phase. First of all, the planning phase is what's happening in your business life in the next 30 to 60 days. So today is October 1st. We know that in the next 30 to 60 days, we have some celebrations that are coming up. We know that there's all kinds of things to do in the month of October, aside from Halloween. But in the next 60 days, we also know that we have Thanksgiving coming up and some other holidays. So um, in the next 30 to 60 days, take your calendar out, look at it in this life in the next 30 to 60 days to market your business. That's the planning phase. We're gonna, I'm going to show you some of the things that you could be doing for the month of October to get into the groove of planning for this month. In the pre-marketing phase, you're going to decide what those events are or those things are that you're going to be doing. You're going to write one or two paragraphs about each community event or marketing item that you decide to do or participate in or event. Um, and you want to write up a little paragraph about that. If you can get in the habit of it, I don't care if you dictate it into uh, your phone, you just say the words, whatever you have to do, get a paragraph down about the events that are coming up. You have to get that, um, those, first of all, you need to be getting involved if you're not already getting involved in your local community, but you need one to two paragraphs about all the things that are coming up in the month of October that you as an organization are participating in. Get those down. On in a Word document or somewhere. And if you have to have somebody transcribe it, fine. Whatever your deal is, just make sure one to two paragraphs about each event and in, in, in your words. And then you have the marketing phase. In the marketing phase, you're going to be, this is uh, the, the live marketing phase. This is where you're out there, you're at the events, you're doing the thing that you said you were going to do. Whatever it is you've planned, during the live marketing phase, you're going to want to take notes, take pictures, write down what happens at the events you attend, ask questions of the attendees, interview them lightly. I mean, I don't, nothing serious. Just ask them how, why did they come, and, and are they enjoying themselves, and you know, what brings you here today? What's, you know, is it a flu shot? Is it, you know, the senior fair because you came for the freebies? What is it that brought them to the event that you are participating in? So while you're there, while you're in the midst of that marketing effort, you want to take some notes, whether they're mental notes or you're writing them down, take a few pictures of things, you at the booth, um, you as an event organizer, you as a speaker, or just the speaker themselves, whatever it is, start documenting are. When you document it and you take those notes and you put something down on paper or you put something in a Word document and you add a few pictures from your cell phone, then you have a beautiful piece that you can use online. The object of the game here is to get you accustomed to use it do, for everything you do offline, is to get that down into a Word document or somewhere where you can actually post it to your website, post it to Facebook, post it to Twitter, LinkedIn, all those places online where thousands more people are going to see it beyond just the few people that you are actually able to interact with at those events. When you combine that offline marketing with that online marketing, you can reach out to so many more people. So you really need to do that. So while you're there, this is the live marketing phase. You're at an event or doing something for your community. You're going to want to write, you know, take some notes, take some pictures. After the event, this is the post-marketing phase, you take that, those notes that you wrote or the things that you thought graphs or thoughts about each event, and you post that to your blog, your Facebook page, your e-newsletter. So for every event on your calendar in the next 30 to 60 days, 
you can write something up about what that event is prior to going to the event, and you can put that on your website or your blog or your Facebook or LinkedIn or hopefully all of them. At the event, you should be taking pictures, taking notes, mentally or otherwise, noting what's going on. And then when you get home or when you get back to the office, you're going to write up a paragraph about how much fun you had, how many attended, whatever it is. You want to think about what happened at that event that made it the success that it was. And you're going to write that down, add some pictures, and boom, send that out to all your social media. Get it on your blog. Do that. This is the post-marketing phase. So there are five steps. We're going to talk about the fifth one here in a second. Um, if you can get in the habit of writing stuff down as you go or making a note of it or having a file on your computer or whatever it is, then you'll be in the habit of combining your offline marketing with your online marketing. There's only five steps. It just takes a few minutes to become a better marketer, and that's what we want to teach you how to do. So. This is the post-marketing phase. So now you've posted twice about that event. You've posted before the event ever happened, and you've posted after the event ended. Um, you've, you've said something about it. And those could be two weeks apart. Those could be a week apart. Whatever it is, you want to try to do that every time. OK, so automating your follow-up. I, I talk about this all the time. When you're at an event, no matter what it is, whether it's consumer driven or professional driven, you want to try to get as many email addresses as possible. If you're at a chamber meeting or you're at a professional healthcare networking event, get as many business cards as you can. If you're at a timers walk or maybe it's a senior fair and you have a booth there, if you have a booth, be sure, even though a lot of seniors may not have an email address, always be sure to ask for an email address and a phone number. Or if you don't want to ask for a phone number, that's fine. They're there for the freebies. But try to get an email address. You want to make sure that everyone that you come in contact with, everyone that you shake hands with, is on your e-newsletter list. And the e-newsletter is the real automated follow-up portion of this. And I'm not talking about a corporate newsletter that goes out that really doesn't say much except some generic articles on elder care. I'm talking about your newsletter, your e-newsletter. It should be coming from you. It should be about events in your city or your town, about the things that the people in your communities really care about. And a lot of the things they care about are all of the events and all of the opportunities they have to learn more about whether it's senior care or caregiving or Alzheimer's and dementia. If you're reporting that stuff to them, then you become the authority and the resource and the trusted person, the trusted company that they would go to in a time of need. And maybe they don't need you today, but maybe they're going to need you six months from now when mom falls and breaks her hip. And you want to be that newsletter that arrived in their box that day, that e-newsletter, so that they pick up the phone and they call you first. So you always want to automate your follow-up. Make sure you have an e-newsletter that goes out to your local community with as many email addresses as possible, and you do that every single month without fail. So let's talk about October. October of 2015 has at least 43 healthcare-related observances. So what I will say uh, several times during this uh, webinar is that there is no reason why you can't market during the month of October or any month for that matter. Um, so if you're looking for reasons to knock on someone's door or to visit them, I'm giving you about 43 of them right now. In a second, I'm going to give you even more. So the month-long observances in the month of October, of course, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's always OK to <clears throat> do some visiting and give somebody a little pink ribbon or whatever you want to do for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's Dental Hygiene Month. It's, I, I highlighted some of them in red that I thought might particularly appeal to the home care market. Um, Health Literacy Month, I didn't, um, I didn't highlight that one, but that might be a good one. Pharmacist Month, uh, Physical Therapy Month, great opportunity for you to stop by those rehabs, those skilled nursing facilities, 
and drop off, you know, of your business card. Maybe it's just a thank you card for being a physical therapist and celebrating Physical Therapist Month. I'm well aware that there are safe harbor rules and you don't want to be giving gifts to every body that are expensive and doing all those kinds of things. However, a thank you card is okay. A small token is okay. It's just something to say, hey, thanks for doing what you do um, and we really appreciate you. And of course, you're going to leave your business card or a little note um, on your letterhead or something like that along with it. There's always a reason to stop by. So if you take these observances for the month of October, you'll never run out of a reason to come by and say hello. If they say, well, what are you doing here? You say, well, it's Talk About Your Medicines Month, and I wrote up this little, um, we wrote up this little handout that might help everybody learn, be, learn how to talk about uh, their medicines better with their pharmacist, their physician, or whoever. So you may have to put a little bit of work into some of these handouts um, or whatever it is that you're going to leave behind, but these are the reasons that you can go by. So there are 43 reasons. Um, some of them are obviously easier to come up with a reason to stop by than others. Case management, aware, uh, case management week, the 11th through the 17th. Now that's coming up, so if you want to stop by and you know, have thank you cards for the case managers at a local rehab facility, a skilled nursing facility, a hospital, then you're definitely going to want to get those thank you cards written up and thank them for either the referrals or for whatever it is and make sure that you stop by and drop those off. If you have names, you want to make sure you have names on them, of course. Healthcare Quality Week, awesome week to be out there marketing about the quality that you provide, about reducing hospital readmission rates, um, all the things that you do to help healthcare be a more quality experience for people. Infection Prevention Week, what are you doing to help um, prevent infections in, in the home? Respiratory Care Week, a great time to go by and see those respiratory therapists. Um, and then there's Recognition Days, so there's Depression Screening Day, um, Arthritis Day is the 12th, Lock Your Meds Day is the 26th, Lung Health Day is the 28th. I mean, there are all kinds of reasons to stop by. So when you're thinking, I don't know why I should go by and see that referral source again, not sure what I could do to get back into that skilled nursing facility, um, you have a reason to stop by and drop some things off. Um, whether it's an educational piece or a thank you note, you can do that. So 43 reasons to stop by. There's also another 122 reasons on this set of slides uh, to stop by. These are month-long observances that may not be healthcare related but might be fun instead. So I did highlight some of these that are kind of fun. So in October, it is Apple Month, so there's a good uh, reason to stop by and drop off some apples. Bat Appreciation Month, now that's kind of silly. Um, might be a little silly. There might be something you could do along that way, along that line. Caffeine Addiction Recovery Month. That could be made into something kind of fun. Emotional Wellness Month. It's Halloween Safety Month, of course. National Audiology Awareness Month. National Caramel. So there are just a lot of good reasons why you might turn something into a fun little snippet. Um, and you know where you get the best ideas? For all of you out there who are like, well, where am I going to get an idea for this? Pinterest. Um, it, it, Pinterest is a fabulous place to look for ideas for all of these observances. And believe me, there is something like today, by the way, I think is international Older Persons Month, and so if, or something like that, International Aging Adult Month, or something like that, if you were to go on Pinterest right now and type that in, there are things about International um, Awareness Month, or International Aging Awareness Month, or whatever it is, or Aging Day 
um, all over the place. The other one is tomorrow is either International or National uh, Guardian Angel Day. Now, that doesn't seem like anything that would relate to home care, but as you can imagine, every single social worker, every single nurse, every single home health aide, uh, everybody who works with seniors, everybody who works with children who are sick, we're all their guardian angels. And so to recognize them by doing a little craft, maybe you've got kids at home and you can have them do those, you know, little hand and, um, you know, those are the kinds of things that if you do a little planning, you could actually get something cute done and drop it off with your business card or put your logo on it or whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be perfect. People love handmade little items, but you do have to plan ahead. So if you know you're going to make 20 stops, you got to have 20 items or maybe you have to have 30 items because there's two people at each stop or one person here and two people there. Whatever it is, you can figure out reasons to stop by. So here are some of the more fun um, month-long observances. These are week-long observances. So in your handout, um, I have given you handouts number uh, the handout number one. All of these are listed. Now I'm not going to confirm whether they're all absolutely real or absolutely not real. They've been reported as, you know, you can look these up on the internet if you want to. It's just a fun way to start a conversation and to really, you know, have a reason to stop by. And people will remember you if you stop by for all of this. I'll tell you, I was a case manager back in the day. I was a discharge planner back in the day when it was okay to stop by and hospitals let anybody in and home care agencies would stop by all the time. Well, um, they, there was one home care agency in our metro area, and the, the gal that was the marketing rep was fantastic. And I will never forget her to this day, because every single week she would stop by and she would leave a little, like, oriental trading, cutesy little item, nothing of any value or significance, with a little note. And she would just make up a ton of these at home, a couple nights before, you know, maybe it was National Flip-Flop Day or something, and she would put these tiny little candle flip-flops from Oriental Trading into a little baggie with a note and her business card attached. It wasn't a valuable item. It was just fun. She dropped it off. And do I remember her to this day? Nearly 15 years later? Absolutely I do. She did a great job. So you can too. And, and she was actually with Home Instead Senior Care. And I will never forget her, her dedication to marketing that. And yes, we did send them referrals. Not because of the gift, but because she became unforgettable. And I knew that with as much as they cared about, about getting the word out about their business, that they would take care of our patients too. And they absolutely did. OK. So here are some more. Now, again, if you go to the handout section of the um, presentation of the little uh, dashboard you have there, I will send this a link to this PDF out um, when I send out the replay of the video. But if you want to, to download this now, you can have this, and all of the days are in here. Obviously, it's a little late to be planning for tomorrow. But if you look ahead a little bit, um, you can certainly think of some things that you could plan for later in the month. So there are literally hundreds of these. You could plan for Mule Day or Howl at the Moon Night. I don't know. So uh, these are uh, a lot of fun. OK, and so this is my last slide with all of the, um, it's Haunted Refrigerator Night on the 30th. Uh, yeah. So and then, of course, Halloween coming up. you got to plan for that. Something fun. So here's my recommendation. Number one, you need to pick five of these. Pick five that are coming toward the, you don't want to do one that's coming up tomorrow. Pick five that are starting next week. Um, and pick those five uh, celebrations. They could be goofy. They could be real, whatever they are. And go to Pinterest and find some little thingies that you could do for those five events. Something simple, something cute. Don't kill yourself making crafts. Just do something fun and cute, even if it's just a thank you card. Um, that's good enough. And you can always have stuff printed fast. 
you can have it overnighted to you, you can have it second day air. I mean, there's, you, in this day and age, there's nothing you can't get done pretty quickly as long as it's simple and to the point. Nothing has to be customized. Just pick something cute. So prepare a leave behind item. So we, I, I mentioned that it's National Popcorn Month. So you know, some people make caramel pop. It's also National Caramel Month, and it's National Apple Month. So you could combine that however you want, and you could leave behind some stuff. Some people won't eat homemade things that are brought to them. Some people will. It's just the thought that counts and the ability to set yourself apart and say, you know, we were here. We were thinking about you. We wanted to drop this off. And if you can, if you can't, still leave a basket of whatever you want behind. But if you can, if you put things in individual bags, even if it's just a paper bag with someone's name on it, then they specifically have to open that bag and see what's in it. And specifically, you have your business card stapled to the top of that little bag. Then each person card, and they have to acknowledge that you know obviously they're probably going to open it to see what's inside. So make it as personal as you can without going to great lengths. If you don't know anybody's name at that facility or you don't know all the discharge planners' name, leave a basket and make sure they know who it's from. But if you can personalize it, if you left them a caramel apple, that's really no big deal. Um, so there are some things that you can do that uh, you can prepare a leave behind item. Attach your business card in a cute note. Now the gal that used to leave stuff for us, I really didn't care about any of that. That it was it was so cute and so funny, but she would always think of a little poem or a little, some kind of rhyme. It was always the cutest little thing. And I got a bigger kick out of her personalized little notes that she would leave for each of us than anything else. It wasn't about the goofy flip-flop candles or the you know, M&Ms or whatever. It wasn't about that. It was about today is National Whatever Day. And she would leave, make, write a little poem and leave a little note for us with that poem on it. Those are the things that, that you know, are funny, thoughtful, and you know, make somebody smile for a minute during maybe a really hard day. So, so look at your calendar and pick five events. Write down those visit dates. So instead of just thinking about it, think, OK, to, uh, you know, next Wednesday is going to be National Whatever Day, and we're going to do something for that. We're going to write thank you notes to all the physical therapists and drive by and drop off some you know, thank you notes. Write down those visit dates. Decide what you're going to do. Make it an event for you as a business owner. Make it a, an event. So you're going to note those events. So it's National Apple Day. And you're going to go around and drop off apples with a cute little note. So you're going to note those events and those fun drop off dates. You're going to make sure they're on your calendar. You know they're going to happen. And then you're going to write something up about it. Just like I said before, take that online, that offline marketing that you're about to do, write up a paragraph about how much fun you're going to have. Take a picture of that big giant bag of apples or take a picture of you with a barrel of apples or whatever it is. Take a picture, make it funny and say National Apple Day is coming up and we are about to thank all of our you know, colleagues in the area with, with you know, something fun and take a picture of the, of the apples. Um, or take a picture of yourself. Make it a surprise. Say, you know, you don't know what's coming your way on National Apple Day. Something cute. Make sure you write it up. Write it up. Talk about what you're about to do. Take pictures of everything you do during that day. Maybe it's yourself driving in the car. Maybe it's, uh, you know, when you walk into a building and drop off uh, the cute little cutesy note to everybody. Take a picture of the note. Um, whatever it is, the receptionist. I mean, who cares? Take pictures of what you're doing and how you're out there canvassing the area, doing your community outreach, thanking people for their service to the community, and you're dropping off some stuff. Take pictures. If you can get email addresses and names, perfect. Get their email address and name. Maybe somebody new that you didn't know about before. If you can't, if, you, if you're just dropping stuff off and moving on, that's OK too. But try to connect with somebody every time you walk in a door. Get their email address. Find out what their name is. Make sure you recognize them. You know, we went to ABC Assisted Living Facility, and we met 
Rhonda, who's at the front desk, take a picture of Rhonda with her apple on National Apple Day. Whatever it is, try to recognize folks and make sure they know that that you're you know you're putting that out on on your website or social media. Write up some fun blurbs about your visits and include photos. Make it really super fun. Be known for something that is that you're trusted, you're an authority, but you know how to have fun and recognize people for all the hard work that they do all day too. And that will make you memorable. Post all of the stuff to your blog. You need to have a blog on your website. I don't know how many times we can say that. Um, when you post an article to your blog, it should then go out to your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, and you can make that happen automatically. If you need to watch one of the webinars we've done previously on how that all works, you're welcome to. I can send you the link to our YouTube channel. But post stuff to your blog so that it goes out everywhere. Show your community what your outreach looks like. Make sure they hit social media. Facebook, especially in the community outreach area, you want to make sure that all the things that you do, whether it's attending a senior for the National Apple Day, whatever it is, make sure it hits social media. Because you may be able to hand out 25 fun little apples in a day, but 2,500 people can see the time that you took to recognize those folks that are important in your life, are important in the community for seniors. So make sure it hits social media. Be unforgettable. This is really what it's all about. You really want to make sure that all the things that you do also hit social media and your community recognizes that logo, they recognize that name, you are unforgettable when you actually are out there really participating in your community and repeat often. Everything you, you do with regard to offline marketing, put it on your online marketing and repeat that over and over again. Leads don't happen overnight. It's about relationship building, especially in home care because people are worried. They don't want their parent to be taken advantage of. This is a trust building exercise. You're out there, you're putting your face forward, and you need to repeat that all the time. You can do anything, but not everything. I like this quote. I found this the other day. Um, you can do anything you want to do, but you can't do everything all the time. So um, most of us, especially us moms out there, kind of know this is true. You can do anything, but you can't do everything. A lot of people need help with converting their offline marketing into online marketing. And that's one of the reasons that we're here at LTC Expert Publications. We help people with that all day long. So I want to just give you a primer on the things that you should have to make this offline to online marketing really work well. You need local search engine optimization on your website by town and city, not by county because uh, people need to know, you need to do it by mailing address, in other words. Counties are okay as a secondary search engine optimization option, but town and city are really where it's at. Um, you need continuous original local content, and that's what I was just talking to you about. Writing up those little snippets, those little blurbs that, that not only hit your website, but also hit all your social media. You need off-site publishing. I mean, you need to make sure you have articles on other websites. You need a local blog. You need to have a blog. You need to be able to put up a post, and it needs to have a feed associated with it. You need to have local social media, meaning you need to have your own Facebook business page. You need to have your own LinkedIn account. You need to have your own Twitter account. You need to have a local newsletter. I talked about this a lot. This is how you avoid follow-up failure. Um, when you're following up because you have an e-newsletter that does go out one time per month and has all these cool little stories about what you were doing all month in it, then that is something people love to open, read, and engage with. And of course, you need to have reputation management, and that means making sure that you have testimonials and reviews from people in your community. And then I have some success factors for you, just so that you understand what all the success factors are for making that offline to online connection. Your website needs to really be that professional image of you. 
it needs to be designed to capture those leads. So when somebody does click on your the thing that you did, uh, the event that you participated in, and it takes in they they're on Facebook and they click on that picture, and it takes them back or that link and it takes them back to your website. You need to make sure they they know exactly how to get a hold of you, whether it be by a phone call or filling out a form. So you need a good lead capture design. Um, obviously, your website needs to be locally search engine optimized. It needs to be mobile responsive. I just ran into a website yesterday that is not mobile responsive. If you do not have a mobile responsive website at this time, then that means that Google has penalized you. Tablets, their iPhones, their smartphones of any kind, if your website isn't truly mobile responsive, and if you don't know what that means, you can look that up. If it's not mobile responsive, then pe Google has penalized that website and moved it down, 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 down in the search, um, in the search rankings um, and moved all of the mobile responsive websites up higher because they want the Google searcher on their iPad, their tablet, their Kindle Fire, whatever it is, to have a really good search experience. So they want those mobile responsive sites up high, and they will kick down all of those websites that are not deemed mobile responsive. You need to have clear calls to action on your website. What do I do next to help solve my own elder care problem? And the answer is call or fill out a form, and you need to make that really clear on your website. You need to have integrated content distribution, which is a fancy word for you need to make sure, or fancy phrase for making sure that your content you post on your blog goes out to your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your e-newsletter, it goes everywhere, and there are ways to do that to make that happen. I always recommend that you have a tracked phone line, and I recommend that because with a tracked phone line, you can make sure that you know what kind of phone calls are coming in through your website. Are they employment calls? Are they leads? It's not because you want to record people's phone calls. It's because you want to know what kind of, what, how your web internet marketing is affecting you. Tracked phone lines are really cheap and really easy to get and you should put one and dial straight through to your office. We put one on all of our clients' websites if they, if they don't have to, but we try to if they want one. And if they want one, we put that on there, and then they can log in, listen to the calls, and then they know how many leads they received from their website, not only in forms, but in phone calls that month. That's super good thing, a super good thing to know. You also need to have a plan. You need to have a keyword plan. So let's say you, you serve the Woodlands, Texas, and Cypress, Texas, and Spring, Texas, and Katy, Texas. You need to have a plan so that you are able to be seen in all of those towns, and not just the town where your office resides. You need to be seen in lots and lots of different towns across your service area. So when you have a keyword plan that's search engine optimized, um, you can prioritize it. What's the most important town for you in your local area? Is it really competitive? Then there should be a plan for that. We do that. We plan out all our content so that our clients show up in the towns they want to be seen in, and we prioritize by importance. So if Houston is the most important town, we make sure they're on the first page for Houston. If Cyprus is their most important town, we go with Cyprus. We plan that out over the course of a long period of time so we can get them visible everywhere, not just in one city or town. Um, and then you need to have search engine optimization, of course, across all of the pages of your website. And we use a sort of a matrix like the one you see on your screen right now. We use that for blog posting. And that's really important because without it, then you continuously repeat the same information information or the same towns and cities, um, you don't rotate. So we try to rotate through keyword phrases and through towns. Okay, success factor number three. You need to blog post a minimum of one time per week. And if you picked five of those uh, celebrations that we were just talking about, that's easily ten blog posts. So you should have one prior to you going out and, and having fun with it and one that has pictures of you know, the post-marketing where you took pictures while you were out there and, and then you follow up with a blog post that talked about how much fun you had and where you went and who you saw and who you met. 
and that's another blog post. So you have two blog posts for each event that you attend, um, one before and one for after. So one time per week is a great amount of time to blog post. All the content you post on your blog should be 100% unique. If you are borrowing content from another website or if someone in your organization is giving you content and it is copied from another place, that's another penalty. It's duplicate content. Google will index an article one time. After it's indexed once, it's not going to worry about all the hundreds of other places where that content shows up. It doesn't care. The first person to post that article is the one that gets the credit for it in Google's eyes. So if you have a writer, what I would challenge you to do is this. Copy all of the content from a recent blog post and put it into a system called Copyscape. And you can find that at copyscape.com, C-O-P-Y-S-C-A-P-E, copyscape.com. Copy and paste the content into that, um, into Copyscape. And it'll return all the places where it finds that exact content. And it'll give you a percentage of how much content is copied from another website. If your blog posting is not 75 to 100 percent unique each time, then you are getting, um, you're not getting any value out of that content. So if you are a franchise owner and you have a franchise that is posting content not on just one site, but on hundreds of sites across your franchise, your website and many other franchise owners' websites, that content's really not doing you much good. Plus, it's not search engine optimized for you locally. It's just a generic article. So keep in mind that you need your content to be 100% unique. Just remember to write it in your own words. I say you need a minimum of 400 to 500 words, but if you just have a blurb that goes out, a few sentences that go out about each event, that'll do. The reason I say 400 to 500 words is because um, uh, Google likes to index pages that have at least that much content in the form of text. So you can't just post a picture and expect it to get indexed or have any value because Google can't read that picture. It doesn't know who's in the picture. It doesn't know why you took the picture. So you need to write some text to go along with each and every PDF document, each and every picture. Don't just post pictures and PDFs to your website. It won't do you any good. Optimize for top keyword priorities as well as many lower volume keywords. We don't just have one set of keyword phrases that we blog post for, for our clients. We have hundreds of them. Um, they're called long tail keyword phrases. And then, of course, you need to feed blog posts to your social media and your monthly newsletter. I've talked about that a lot. You need to publish local company news, which is what we've been talking about. People, events, celebrations, all of those things need to go on your blog. And then you need to publish articles with your key referral partners. So if you have a non-competitive referral partner, let's say you're a home care agency and there's a local assisted living facility, you can write an article about them. They can write an article about you. You're not competing with each other. You are simply um, highlighting each other on your websites. And that works really well. We're going to talk about that again in a minute. Success factor number four is engaging through social media. Facebook is your community outreach. You should be reaching out through Facebook to your local community. If you don't have enough likes, you should have at least 1,000 likes. If you don't have 1,000 likes, then you can absolutely set your Facebook account up to um, promote your page in your local area and get that 1,000 likes. You need to have more than that even, but 1,000 is a good baseline these days. LinkedIn, professional to professional outreach and communication. So LinkedIn is not necessarily as much community outreach as it is professional to professional networking. So you want to reach out to those professionals that you can't get a hold of in person and ask them to join you for coffee or ask them if you can send over some more information. Reach out to them through LinkedIn. Uh, that might be a much better way than trying to get to them through the receptionist at their job. Feed content from your blog to all these places. Boost important posts on Facebook. You can pay five bucks to boost a post. That's awesome. You should do that. It will go out to people in your local area if you set it up right. Invite everyone on your email list to like your Facebook business page. You should know the URL for your Facebook business page, and you need to make sure people are actually invited um, to like it. You want as many likes as you can get. 
and then you can use Facebook paid ads if you want to to build your likes. The reason we talk about these things is because they're really low cost and they drive a ton of traffic. If you go on Facebook right now and you type in Alzheimer's Care Daily, you look search for a page called Alzheimer's Care Daily, you will see that that page has over 10,000 fans. It drives a ton of traffic to the website alzheimerscaredaily.com. Um, and we got that traffic and we got that it, over the course of time. We spent a little money here, a little money there, boosting our posts, sharing other people's posts actually um, from other Alzheimer's sites. We shared them on ours and people just went crazy and started liking it. They engaged with each other. Same for Help for Aging Veterans. There's a lot of community activity going on there on Facebook. And we just spent a little bit of money. $5 here, $10 there, and we have tons and tons of interactivity. And that's what Google wants to see between you and your website. And of course, you need to publish more testimonials. OK, so here is an example of an automated e-newsletter. So if you go to MailChimp.com, you can set this up yourself. There are some parameters, some things that you have to do. Another one is called Campaign Monitor. And so you put all your blog posting on your website, and then boom, these types of programs pick up all that stuff, turn it into a little cute newsletter, and send it out to your prospects, your potential referral partners, your clients. And your revenue does go up if you do this. If you have the content there, if your newsletter actually goes out, you will have better revenue by the end of the year. And the reason is, that the person that did not have any desire to look at your newsletter this month may be all about your newsletter next month when their mother has a stroke or falls and breaks their hip. You want to make sure that you are absolutely having an e-newsletter go out, whether it's paid, a paid system, or it's free. Now MailChimp, M-A-I-L-C-H-I-M-P, MailChimp.com has a free version. And it's okay to use, but you have to have, I think, under 500 contacts or something. Um, and then uh, Campaign Monitor does not, I don't think, has a free version, but they have an $8 version. So there are some ones out there that you can look at, mess around with, and see what they have to offer. But this does keep you top of mind in those prospects and referral partners' um, mailbox, and it does build engagement. The other thing thing that we want people to do and to know and to understand is that they really need to publish articles not only on their own website but on other websites. It might be a local newspaper site or it might be one of these national sites. So we have some national sites we like to publish our clients information on, or their, their articles, um, alzheimerscaredaily.com, help for aging veterans, uh, reduce hospital readmission rates.com, and living care for seniors are just a few. Um, it builds authority. Our clients are able to say, hey, you know, um, I'm, I, you know, they're emailing back and forth with a prospect, a, an adult child of an aging parent, and they know that they have articles on Alzheimer's Care Daily. They can say, hey, Mary, I know that this is a hard time, and I know that you're not sure if home care is right for you, um, but if there's anything we can do, any questions we can answer, we will absolutely help you. And by the way, here is an article that um, I recently wrote, or our, our president of our company, or whatever, how, whatever you want to say, recently wrote about Alzheimer's care. It might be helpful to you. It might help you with some decision making. Uh, here's the link. Take some time to read it if you can. Uh, we just know that we're very passionate about this, and we want to help. Now. You can send, our clients, or maybe even you, can send an email like that to a prospect who's really on the, kind of teetering on the fence about whether or not to use home care. Um, and if they do decide to use home care, they're not sure if they're going to use you or someone else. When you send them that article link, and it shows your passion for what you do, and that you are an authority, and that you are someone they can trust, their chances are they're going to choose you over anyone else because your competition can't send them that link. They don't have that. You all out there need to take responsibility for your own online publishing and make sure that you're writing articles that can not only go on your site but on other people's site as well, other sites as well. Our clients all have articles on other national sites that they can back their authority up with. Okay, um, and they can 
use them as leave behinds, follow ups, and of course, those articles also give them links back to their own website, which is valuable in Google's eyes. We also have a reputation management system, but what, no matter what you use, whether it's Google or Yelp or whatever, you want to make sure you have a very high volume of positive testimonials online. You want to move all those, eliminate those negative reviews. If you use a service like Senior Service Reviews or you use something like, I don't know if it's care or caring.com, those services allow you to decide whether a review goes live or not. And here's my opinion on that. In the home care industry, you'll be lucky to have 100 reviews in the lifetime of your business or testimonials online on a third party website. Um, if you're a steakhouse in Chicago, you may have a thousand reviews over the course of a year or two. And inside of those thousand reviews, there are 10 negative reviews. But those 990 other positive reviews are covering up those 10 bad ones. In home care, you don't have that luxury. So if you don't have um, a, a way to discern between a customer service issue, which is what a bad review is, and a good in, in publishing a good review, then you get yourself into trouble. One bad review for a home care agency live on Google or Yelp can really, really have a bad effect because it's going to show up everywhere. Be in control of your own reputation. Use a third party site and use one where you can control what is seen by the public. A bad review is a private customer service issue that needs to be resolved between you and that employee or you and that customer, not something that we slap out all over Google. Not, not necessary. Okay, so I've talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of success factors, and this is what it looks like. If you were to put it all down on a piece of paper, like a map, this is kind of what it looks like. So look at all these little buildings and little roads and things here. So if we start at the top left, we have blog articles for SEO and company news. This is your website and your blog. They should be together as one. Um, and that all those articles that you write, all the events that you attend, they go out to your e-newsletter, they go out to your social media. Um, your, your senior service reviews or your reputation stuff, your testimonials and reviews are down there in the white box at the bottom left-hand corner. Um, those go to your website and they also go out to social media if they're positive. Um, then all the way over to the right hand side you have all of the authority sites. These are those national sites where you have articles written. And those authority sites, all those articles go out to all of your social media, but they also give you great links back to your website that Google appreciates and, and makes you look like a trusted and valued content provider. So this is kind of the roadmap of success. This is what it looks like for home care, and this is what you should be doing. All of this is a lot of stuff. So back to my slide where it says you can do anything you want to do, but sometimes you can't do everything. So um, we help with that. So that's that's the end of my um, the things that I wanted to tell you about. But I want you to also know that no matter who you're using out there, if you're using someone who's providing SEO services, ask them what they're doing. Ask them. We have a lot of folks that come to us and they say, yeah, I have somebody doing my SEO. Oh, really? So what are they doing for you? I don't know. Well, if you don't know, then stop paying them because you should know what your SEO company is doing for you. Please know what they're doing. If they can't explain it to you or show it to you in real time, then they're not doing anything for you. This is what we show our clients every single month. They have tracking and reporting. It goes out to them on the 8th of the month. They can log into it 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It, it shows them everything, the keyword phrases. If you look at this little sheet here, you can see like this first keyword phrase, Senior Care Newport Beach. This client is brand new, but they're number three on the first page of Google for the word Senior Care Newport Beach. That's fabulous. They want to be on the first page of Google for as many keyword phrases as we can get them up there for. So you want to make sure you're getting reports. You want to know actively, what is that person doing? What blog post did they put up? Um, what did they do for SEO? Do, and do you have a track phone line? And what's the keyword plan? All of those things are super important. So if you don't know what your SEO company is doing for you, please ask them. Stop paying them if they cannot publish a report that shows your performance. It's super important. 
Okay, so um, of those success factors and of all the offline to online marketing things, I just wanted to let you know that LTC Expert Publications does all of this stuff for our clients. Now, we want our clients to participate as much as possible. We want them to do all these little October fun things that they should be doing, and we want them to contribute, and they, we need them to do that. It is important that you contribute to your online marketing. But to keep up with all the other stuff that goes on is a lot of work. So we do that for them. And we publish content for them every single week, no matter uh, whether or not we hear from them, whether we hear from them or not. So um, a lot of times, um, these are all the things that we do for them. And they supplement this on top of what we do for a very, very successful campaign, very successful online presence. So some people need a new WordPress website. Some people don't. So if we if they need one, we put we do website development for them. If they don't need one, we work with what they have. We set up all the social media accounts or work with the ones they have. We give them the keyword plan, and we work with a keyword plan to get make sure they're showing up in all their towns. We help them with Google Places. We do original article blogging one time per week, plus anything they submit to us that week. Um, we publish company news, which is their information. Um, that local e-newsletter, we do that, set that up, have that go out for them. The authority article publishing on all of those other national sites I told you about, we do that for them. We help them with their reputation management. We do all of their SEO management and reporting. We do all of that. And so a lot of times folks pay us a big setup fee and they pay us a monthly fee. But um, George and I started doing this um, about a month ago. And it's been really successful, and people have loved it. And I ha do have a bonus for you, by the way. Um, but this special offer, I'm going to put that it ends October 5th. We keep extending it, um, but I think we're going to probably not extend it much further because our client, we, we really do have a lot of um, great folks coming on board with us. So a uh, special offer, offer ends October 5th. Now, if you don't want to pay a big setup fee, but you do need the help, and you don't need a website at all, you just need the monthly help. Um, instead of paying a big setup fee for a one-year commitment, we'll just uh, our fee is $495 per month, and that special offer ends October 5th. If you do need a website, let's say you don't have one, or it's really old, or it's not it's not um, a mobile responsive. We talked about that. You do need a website. We still are asking for a one-year commitment. Um, the fee is $795 per month, and there is no setup fee. So we're waiving the setup fees for a one-year commitment to a program, either program A or program B. Um, and George can tell you more about that. Um, if you want to, to know more or see more or get the bonuses, you need to go to ltcsocialmark.com forward slash October 15. So OCT15, OCT15. Um, is the website address, ltcsocialmark.com, that's our website, forward slash OCT15, O-C-T-1-5. If you want to know more about this stuff, you can go there. Or you can email George at george at ltcep.com. Um, and here are my bonuses, because I know everybody loves this stuff. We've already given some of these away. So um, five PowerPoint presentations that you can use in dozens of ways and a full guide to show you where and how to use them as marketing materials. So they're already done for you. All you have to do is put your logo on them, and away you go. Maybe you're going to do a speaking engagement. Maybe you're just going to use them as handouts. Maybe you're going to use them as something you can email to folks. Um, they cover all different topics, um, all home care related, uh, so that you can't, you can't lose. They're really good. They're very colorful. They have great graphics. And you can just put your logo on them, and you're done. Um, and use them however you want. But I do have a guide for you that shows you how to use them. And then I also have a foolproof appointment setting system for home care agencies. Now, this is the way that I like to get appointments with home care agencies when I was doing some marketing. Um, it's easy, it works well, and it's all about that offline to online marketing. If you've heard me in the past, you know I've talked about how to use in your pow the power of interviewing to get in the door with people you could not get in the door with before. I have a foolproof appointment setting system for home care agencies. It will get you in the door if you follow it step by step. 
So those are my two bonuses. If you sign up for Program A or Program B, either you do need a website or you do not need a website. If you do not, it's $4.95 a month, no setup fees. And if you do need a website, it's $795 a month um, because we will do a full website for you, a big website, um, $795 a month. But it's a year commitment either way. You can see all of this at ltcsocialmark.com forward slash October 15, OCT15. O -C -T -15. Okay, so I am going to take questions. I want you to write down your questions. Please um, put questions in the little dashboard, and I will go through and answer as many questions as I can. So one of the questions that somebody asked was, what sources do you pull the observances from? It would be good to have several months ahead for planning purposes. Um, well, I can't give away all my sources, but you can go online. And that actually, the last webinar we did, we gave away the 2015 Healthcare Observances um, PDF, and that was put together by the National Hospital Association. Um, so you can go online and find that. Um, and there are other, the other fun observances are all over the place. We take a lot of time to put those together. Um, and we will be doing the next webinar um, at the end of October so that you have all of the November observances. And we're going to do some specific stuff for that one. So we will do this every month for you. But I know it's important. Maybe we'll do in November the um, complete November, December holiday observances stuff. Because uh, I know that you got to kind of plan ahead for some of this. But um, for October, you've got the handout. And we will make sure that in no uh, end of October, early November, we'll go ahead and do one for the next two months. So you have November and December. Um, what was the name of the website that does the newsletter captures? That's uh, One of them is MailChimp, M-A-I-L, chimp, like a monkey, MailChimp.com. Um, are the slides available? And be sure to type in your questions, folks, because um, I'm gonna, just going to go through here and answer them. And I'm happy to answer your question. Somebody wants me to go back. Wants me to go back a slide. There you go. I will go back a slide here for you. Okay. Um, are the slides available, Jim? I always send out the replay of every webinar, but I do not send out specific slides. I do post them on SlideShare. They will not be downloadable. Um, if you want the handout that has all the October stuff, if you go to your little document or your little, uh, I guess, control panel thing you have for the webinar, there's handouts there, and there's only one handout, and it's a PDF. So all of those um, of our stuff are, is available. So if you want to see the slides, when I send out the replay, there'll be the video of this entire webinar, plus there'll be a slide share there underneath the, underneath the video that will show, um, you can just flip through all the slides. All right, how do we get the bonuses if we are already a LTCEP client? Brian, you can have them. I will send them over to you. You are welcome to anything that we have. In fact, it's probably already on our marketing site for you. But I will absolutely get that over to you. Please show the last screen again. There's your last screen. Five PowerPoint presentations you can use in dozens of ways in a full guide to show you where and how to use them as marketing materials, and my full proof appointment setting system for home care agencies. So you can go there and get those anytime, um, Brian. And But I will send them out to you. And if you become a client of ours, you have access to these plus an entire private site of marketing materials. So ltcepmarketing.com is our private site for our clients. You can go there and see videos, templates, oh goodness, all kinds of stuff is there. Um, let's see, what was the last webinar that had the PDF you just referenced? Our last webinar was um, O2O Marketing. If you type in O as not zero, but the letter O2O Marketing for Home Care, and the Google search will probably come up with or in a YouTube search, you'll come up with a video. If you go to our website, LTCEP, I mean, I'm sorry, LTCSocialMark.com, you'll also, if you go to videos, our videos page, you'll see all the last latest webinars there. 
And if you go to ltcsocialmark.com forward slash October 15, OCT15, we will make sure that George talks to you about Program A and Program B. We just want to make sure everyone knows that it's available. If you need help, we want to help you. And um, we waive all of those setup fees. That can be um, pretty steep for a six-month contract, but on a one-year contract, we waive all of that. So that's awesome. Um, anybody else have any questions for me about um, the October stuff, about online to offline, offline to online marketing, anything that you have questions about? I think that might be all of our questions for today. I want to thank everybody for attending. I hope your October is fabulous. Please pick five of those events and go out there and have a great time with them. Um, the replay will be sent out in the next couple of hours. Um, it has to render and do a few things, and we have to get it uploaded to YouTube. But we will send out the replay to everyone who registered. So thank you very much, everybody. And we hope to talk to you soon. If you need us, uh, email george at george at ltcep.com. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.